Okay, internet, so I'm in my garage right now and I got the garage door closed because there's traffic outside. It gets a little loud. But anyways, um, today I'm going to show you that trailer back there. It's a Taxa Cricket, a 2021 Taxa Cricket. Pretty cool, I think. Uh, it's got a couple of things that I'm going to need to change on it, but I'm going to just give you a walk around and show you how it's all set up or show you what it looks like, at least in basic form, before I start doing all the tinkering and stuff like that. So it's a pretty cool trailer. It's a about 16 gallons worth of water it's got a a battery very basic one um and uh what a cooktop two burner cooktop and a sink uh gray water tank i think as, as well for about 16 gallons too so it's not the biggest trailer out there but it can definitely get you out there um boondocking or camping or whatever else not it's got city water as well if you into uh, or if you want to go to a campsite, a proper campsite where you can actually plug in, you can do that. And it's got 30 amp service. And right over there, that's an AC unit right there, which um, I could take or not take. I think the problem with AC units is that you need a generator. Generators make a lot of noise and that kind of stuff, unless you've got a whole lot of batteries. So it usually ends up being this thing, you know, like are you at a campground where you can plug in 30 amp service so you can use the AC, or do you have a whole bunch of solar and lithium in there to try to make up for that? So, but anyways, this is just a little walkthrough uh, off the, uh, the camper itself and just kind of show you guys what it's all about and um, talk about some of the things I'm going to do to it. Just keep in mind I'm in my garage right now so there's not a lot of room. I'm going to have to do a little maneuvering around. I'm also working on a Jeep that's uh, outside so lots of parts in here. I'm sitting on a winch right now so just not a lot of room so we're going to have to work around some of that stuff but I just wanted to shoot this before I start uh, tinkering with it, removing the stickers and whatnot. Uh, it just seems like a few too many stickers. You know, one even has the model year on it on a big round sticker. I just don't think it's necessary, but to each their own. And I kind of want to wrap it too. I think I want it to match my Jeep. Uh, my Jeep is silver and that's white. I'd like it to be like uh, something in between. Not so much white, a little bit. Just some more gray tones, you know, things like that. But uh, let me stop rambling and uh, kind of show you what we got. All right, so I want to... Try to go up here. So this is my Taxi Cricket 2021 model. Um, yeah, and it's in my garage. So that's one cool thing about it. I wanted to go with an Airstream, but uh, uh, an Airstream would not have been able to fit in this garage. This garage door is about 93 inches, 94 inches about. So this was able to clear it just fine. Not in its current open state. As you can see right now, this is open. The pop-up is up. So not in that current state. And as I have found out, you cannot open the garage door while the pop-up is up. So I do have to put that down before I uh, show you what it looks like with it closed up. So if you're looking at the top, you can see that it's got a uh, uh, Thule roof rack, a Thule roof rack system, which you can option it out with that. And um, I've got some bike racks, which you see right there on the corner, some bike trays, uh, Thule as well. Three of them right now, four can actually go on that. Um, so that's the AC unit that you see right there, which works when you're plugged into shore power and that's 30 amp service right there. You can see I'm just plugged into my garage using a dongle. All right. Um, what else on the outside? It's got a heater and, um, we'll look at that when we're inside, but big garage door on the back that kind of flips open like that which I'll kind of show you. As you can see, there's not a lot of room to open it. So it's all gonna be, there's tons of videos out there. If you really wanna see something, you can go to Taxa Outdoors and they'll really give you a, uh, a real walkthrough. This is more about mine than it is about all the technical ins and outs off the, um, the trail. Over here, I also have a fridge, which I just got. It's a Dometic C, uh, CFX 355IM, which uh, I've got a video on that. I'm, I'll have to post that, but um, so here's my Taxa Cricket. Uh, fridge there is the fridge. Taxaoutdoors.com is where you can go to see these things, and <laughs> this is this is what I'm talking about all, about all the stickers, right? I mean, this is completely necessary. It's like I'm a big Taxa commercial or something, so I do need to get rid of that. But this is kind of cool. It kind of shows you all the different models. 
uh, that you, no, I'm sorry, not the different models, but the different uh, configurations. This is the same trailer with the top down, and this is it with the top up. So that's kind of cool. But uh, uh, let's see. Uh, wheel size, we'll just start with that. So you're running 235, 75 R15s. And, you know, I'm not sure. They actually have an Overland edition of this, which just means that it sits a little bit higher. And again, I couldn't get that because I think that would interfere with my garage over there and being able to get it in here. But I am going to look at something like air suspension or something like that, where I can lower it and put it in the garage because it wouldn't be bad to have as much clearance on this as I do in my Jeep. So just so I can take it wherever my Jeep can go. Um, what else do we have out here? Out here we've got these little side steps right here. You can mount gear on that, strap it down. You know, all these are strap down points right there. So, and you can also stand on it to do stuff on the roof, put the bikes up and whatever else not. It's got four uh, stabilizers jacks right here, one on each corner. Um, and then we move up to this here. We've got the 30 amp service. Um, you can see it's on right now because it's got the little red light but I just have it downgraded to 110 over here or converted or adapted so I can plug it in in my garage. Uh, if I was plugged into city at a campsite, KOA or whatever else not, I can plug in my water right here, uh, my water hose, and uh, it takes up to 125 PSI, which seems like a whole lot because people usually uh, try to block such PSI from going into their systems, but so that's kind of cool that it has that. Uh, Truma, which is your hot water and furnace, is kind of like a combination thing, which is essentially the same thing that they use in the, um, uh, what do you call those things, airstreams. So kind of cool. And then solar plug right there. And I actually have a Renogy solar panel right here, kind of like one of those briefca uh, briefcase models. And uh, no, I do not have a lion here, but I do have a very big dog. And hence that bone. And this is all that Jeep stuff I'm working on. Uh, there'll be videos on that, but that's my factory plastic bumper replacing with a steel bumper and whatever else not. And that's all this stuff right here. Uh, but we're going to try to maneuver around it. And uh, over here, outdoor shower, hot and cold. So that's pretty cool. So, And then uh, it comes with a shower tent, which I'll show you that's inside that you can kind of set up out here and do that. This, however, I found is pretty cool. This is the, uh, what do you call this? Auto brake, like auto is an automobile and uh, brake. So it's basically, um, um, what do you call that? Trailer braking system that you can use. So it detects when you've pushed on your brake in there because you sync it using these two buttons right here and then it syncs up with your uh, seven pin connection whenever you hit your brakes it knows to also apply brakes on here pretty intelligent system and i love that because i actually don't have trailer braking on my jeep so um when i picked this up it was actually very cool getting that set up and it also has a key fob that you can use to manually apply brakes or you know release them so super cool on that um out here in the front is the the hitch system. Okay, so it just has a normal ball uh, over here. The Overland Edition actually has one of those lock and roll hitches. So you can convert these, but they kind of have to cut it and then weld on a new piece and whatever else not. So, but lock and roll is pretty cool, especially if you're gonna be driving off-road. Um, but I'll keep that on for right now, but that's a future upgrade right there. In here is, uh, you gotta twist these. So in here is the propane. So what I'm doing here is twisting these little knobs and then you flip it over. But there's two 20 pound uh, propane tanks in here. And that's what you use for your hot water and for your furnace. So I'm still gonna find out exactly how long those will last for, but I did have an Airstream base camp before and the heating system does not use that much propane at all. And actually, you know what? I forgot to mention something in here. Uh, so let's get back in here again. So this is cool because this is actually selectable. So when you look in here, right here, there's a selector switch. So you can have it 
point to one direction where it uses that tank, for example, or in the middle where it kind of just uses both, or you can flip it all the way to the right one or left one, depending on your orientation, and it'll use that tank. What's cool, what I like to do is keep it at one side. That way when it runs out, you know that you still have a whole full tank to go. So if you just keep it in the middle, it'll drain both tanks and you're not gonna know when you're actually out. So I keep that on one side. And uh, close that up. All right, now maneuvering through these wrenches and whatever else not will take us to the other side and I'm just gonna close this door right here. Okay, so once again, <laughs> big unnecessary sticker right here, uh, 2021 Tax Outdoors. It's like, okay, got it. Um, same thing with this sticker right here, but I'm gonna work on that. Uh, so this is the tent and this is from the front part. Up there you see the connection or the connection, the tie down or the system that you use to clip it into the into the into uh, towing mode or whatever mode, right? To lower your roof, basically. So that just comes down and it hooks up over here. And you know, people love to say this. This here says taxa. Um, if you're looking in a mirror or something like that, and that's also a bottle opener. Uh, so just a cool little doohickey. So not a lot of room on this side. Also working on a van project, trying to build a camper out of a van, so tons of wood in here. Um, I wish I had as much time as I have ideas, but I just uh, don't. So same thing on this side, a little step over there, uh, trailer or stabilizer jack over there, same kind of sticker situation. Uh, nice windows, and uh, that's a tent up here. So you can actually replace these tents or these tent sides or whatever you want to call them. And it's just all Velcroed together. So um, it actually doesn't take very long at all. And you just pull that off and replace it. It's got a Thule awning up there um, that you can set up. It's just the one with the legs on it. So I wouldn't mind getting one of those bat wing awnings or some kind of uh, uh, 180 degree awning system of some sort. So it's not just a little uh, porch kind of like what I have set up here. And then I'll bring you guys up here so you can see the Thule setup. All right, that's it. And so now we're gonna open this door. Um, so let's take a look. Oh, well, that seems like it's locked now. I don't remember locking it. So let's see if we can find the keys in this mess. So, I forget, did we talk about this fridge? Yeah, we did. That fridge actually goes in here, um, but I'm doing some work inside, trying to see how everything is all set up. So there's not enough room in there right now. So this, we'll, we'll just talk about this right now. So this is always very confusing. And I think Airstream once again, and maybe some other RVs have the same locking system. One is the deadbolt, and then one is the actual uh, the latch itself to lock it so it doesn't open. So I never know which one is the latch and which one is the deadbolt. So it's always confusing to figure out are you unlocked, or are you not? So this feels like the deadbolt. And you just heard that unlock. Hmm. Whatever. But so let's open it all up all the way up. Okay, so that's the deadbolt right there, and you can lock it from inside as well. Over here is a pretty cool system. That's how it kind of latches in, so it stops it from uh, blowing in the wind. So, a uh, cool little system. And then we come in here. This is the window, and it's got multiple modes on it, right? So you can have it all the way closed, night mode, or incognito mode, or whatever you want to call that but you can then open it completely, all right? And then you can also do a kind of a sunshade, all right? And over here, the windows also crack, you know, so you don't have to feel like you gotta open the window all the way, which I actually did this one night when I was camping at a Walmart. I didn't wanna have them completely open just in case somebody reaches in there and snatches me out or something. So I kind of had them 
you know, I don't know if you can see very well, but it's got a little groove in there where you can kind of position it, kind of just cracked. And that's enough to kind of circulate air, which when you turn on the fan, because there's a fan up there, when you turn on that fan and you crack that window, air actually circulates like amazingly well. So it's, it's actually pretty fantastic that you can do that. So without doing that, actually, the fan kind of makes it's a little bit louder because it's trying to suck everything out. That's if you've got it on vent mode, right? So super cool that they have that going on. In here, a little bit of a mess. Um, basically picked it up. Um, I slept in it. Um, one night I had to stop by Walmart, pick up a, a pillow. You still see the pillow over there. And... Um, there's a sleeping bag somewhere in here, but basically just try to make do what I, with what I had so I could make it home. Um, let's see. Uh, what are we looking at in here? So, okay, we'll talk about lights. So this is your light station or your electrical station right here. So I'm just gonna turn on a few lights before I get started so we can actually see what's in here. So I flip that open we'll flip that on and that's the light and so that's that light over there over here it also has some lights underneath and there's some lights on the roof like for your or well, not on the roof but for your awning that you can turn on using that switch right there and uh the fuses are in line right there and uh, uh more fuses then if we come over here there's more light switches, so we can actually make it a little bit brighter in here. So we're just gonna turn everything on. So you can see that's another LED strip of lights over here. Um, and now it's a little bit brighter in here. So we'll just start at the front. Um, that is an addition that's not really factory, but you can kind of, so you kind of have uh, electrical up here as well when you're plugged into shore power or you're running a generator using that 30 amp service out there. And this, of course, is just my plug for my laptop because I was doing some research while in here and uh, working at the same time. So um, this is your sink. Nothing to it. Hot and cold. And uh, it just flips up like that. So I have to... Um, this here is... The screws out of this here are actually not done very well. So I, was, I took those out to try to see if I can find a different system that I can use to secure that. But so this is actually technically off right now while I try to figure that out. And these are the screws that come with it. So they just don't stay very well. I'm thinking maybe a little bit of Loctite in there to keep them from coming out. But the way it works is that this here, um, when it's up like that, it doesn't, the lid won't fall down, right? You kind of have to pull the lid up and then close it like that. So, but that creates a weird little system right there and I need to look at that. But a uh, basic Dometic two burner stove. And then uh, I'm gonna sit down over here and this is your fuse panel in here. Um, so just all your fuses, just a regular auto grade uses nothing to it there this is because i'm plugged into shore power right now right so that battery is fully charged and um speaking of which that's the <laughs> very 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 basic battery that's down there so you can put two group 24 i believe which is what i think this is or uh two group 27 batteries in here and uh, you can see the tray has a bunch, well, maybe you can't see, but there's a little bit more room in there. Like if you see right there at the end, if I'm zoomed out like this, there's a little bit more room for a bigger battery. So I'm gonna do that. And the other battery goes deep on the other side of this one. So you can put two group 27 batteries in there and I'm trying to figure that out, figure that out right now. This system right here is not meant to handle lithium which is a shame. So if I switch to lithium, I think there's a whole bunch of upgrading that I have to do to make that work right. So I'm kind of trying to investigate what I'm gonna to have to do about that right now. So um, kind of uh, actually sucks because I would like to be able to just buy lithium batteries and just throw them in there and call it good, but that's not gonna work as well. I believe you can do that, but then, um, 
what did they say? I think you can do that, but if you if you get the lithium, it only charges up to 80%, so it's not very efficient charging. So you could technically just buy them, put them in there, but you have to be okay losing 80% or not 80, uh, 20% of your uh, capacity right there, which is not the end of the world. I guess you could buy it and then do that for right now and then wait until you convert everything else. But um, so much for that. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Battery disconnect. And this is that uh, extension cord that's plugged in up there just so there's more power elsewhere. Um, just some crates in here uh, that hold stuff. So uh, the milk crate type situation. And uh, same thing over there, just a bunch of odds and ends trying to figure out organization in here and how everything will work. A hose. And then underneath there is one of those portable cassette toilet deal things right there. So fire extinguisher, um, some vents over here for your system. And this is that Truma system right here. And uh, like I said before, the um, Airstream has the same kind of system and it's pretty convenient the way it works. But uh, you just uh, kind of select what you want to do. You know, that's off right now. You can turn it on water fan you can turn that on and there's some settings you can configure over here timed you can also do some timed settings like hey i want the heat to come on at x time or whatever else not um or i want it to shut off at a particular uh, particular after a particular amount of time so um if you're trying to guess what time it is where i am that's not it that's actually just wrong so so i need to correct that time uh, let's see, what else do we have? So over here, um, this is a couple of fuses. I'll take those. So over here is the rest of the system. This is the AC unit right here. Uh, Frigidaire, just a basic system. Again, you need to be plugged into AC to use that. Um, I would have almost rather taken a window there, but whatever. Um, that's not factory, that's just an iPad system to hold an iPad so you can kind of watch uh, some stuff at night. Uh, let's see. What are we going to talk about first? These here. Uh, the factory system doesn't hold them down. Very, it, it doesn't hold them up very well. They're basically kids' beds. Or if you're an adult without kids, you can use that as storage and whatever else not. Because they've got a limit of 130 pounds. So I've got them strapped up here. I'm trying to figure out a different system so that I can strap them higher. I'm about six foot one so when i sit down and it's not all the way up and it's in the factory position it hangs down too low so then i kind of hit my head on that so i just have them kind of jerry-rigged up here right now as i figure that out so um these latches well let's keep talking about the bed i guess so this is the table the table goes down and then um, becomes a platform for the bed and then you put these cushions on there and then you got a nice flat area i'm six foot one like i said and this is more than enough space for me to sleep. Um, as a matter of fact, let's see how it looks. So my head is all the way to the top and my feet. Yeah, so this is literally just about my height uh, from end to end. So uh, in case you're wondering what I'm wearing, these are my cool Crocs. Um, yeah, so let's see tons of storage underneath here uh again just working on redesigning and shuffling everything around so excuse all that same kind of concept idea with the windows over here with the uh, the nightshade the sunshade and the complete open um on my left here is the same window situation and that's that big door that opens you can see the gas struts on the sides all right another window over here so you do not have a shortage of windows which is pretty cool so you don't feel that uh, uh, closed in feel you can still let nature in which is now that I think about it which is actually kind of a big deal because I used to have um, what do you call it uh, a conqueror which is a very very nice um, um, trailer but when you're inside it kind of feels dungeony like you're in a bunker like a um, what do you call that uh, end of the world bunker of some sort very cool trailer but just didn't have a lot of um, uh, windows inside it so so 
So I like that this does have a lot of rooms, uh, a lot of uh, windows, and that, as a matter of fact, these tent openings right here, uh, actually you can zip that open and then there's netting in there. And so that's pretty legitimate. So you don't have a shortage of the, uh, of nature. Okay, so let's get on with it. Put that back down there. And uh, what else do we have in here? So, um, this latch systems, you know, we can do another video sometime, but, or you can watch taxes videos if you really, again, want to see everything about these things. But there's a latch system in here where that just kind of hooks up in there and you can use that as storage space underneath here. Um, let's see what else. The AC unit is plugged in there, so that's more 110 switches. You've got, this is where I plug in my uh, Dometic fridge that I showed you outside. So 12 volt over there, 12 volt over here, uh, USB right there. Uh, same thing with up here, 12 volt and uh, USB right there. So uh, this is your uh, fan system right here. You can turn it on just like that, and then you can reverse direction over here whether you wanted to suck in or blow out and uh, multi-speed up to three so it gets pretty loud so I'm just gonna turn that off but uh, I talked about these vents just like that and uh, these gas lifts here are for the what do you call it for the tent side Okay, so right now I'm going to show you how that tent side comes down. So there's these la latches inside, um, one on each side, and um, this system over here. Which, let me just move this back here. Okay, uh, this system over here that you use to actually lower and raise the roof. So this is me lowering it right now. And this would be me, this would be the last action I do after I unclip the brace outside and uh, these two inside. So I'm just actually gonna put, I'm gonna try to put this, well, actually, yeah, maybe this is far enough. So this is me standing in this unit right now. This is how far it goes up. Again, six one, and uh, I've got room to spare up here and it's even more room up here over the kitchen. So not a shortage of room um, over there. And then it goes narrower or shorter. Yeah, something like that as you go further inside. But this doesn't matter a whole lot because if you were here, for example, you would be sitting down and there's still tons of room, right? The standing room you would need as if you were cooking which is over there, and that's a great amount of room. I think that's like, I don't know, <laughs> uh, nine, eight, eight feet, something like that. So um, let's see. So yeah, me sitting down like this right now, um, tons of room. So that's why I had to strap this up a little bit higher because otherwise that would hit my head over here. So, but in that configuration, I have more than enough room and I can actually slide down and I still have enough room. I can slide almost all the way to the back and then it starts touching right here. So um, four people I'd say can sit around this table comfortably. So um, that's, uh, that's that. So we're gonna lower the roof now and I'm gonna show you how that works. Okay, so here we go pull this and the tent is supposed to automatically kind of come in by itself these straps here kind of help encourage it to come in so you don't pinch it see there's another strap right here and there's another strap and then it just kind of you can also help it if you must you know just in case for some reason it's a windy day or there's too much pressure inside and it's keeping it uh, open so you can Lower it all the way while watching to make sure that the tent is in on all sides. Which it is. There's no pinches or anything like that. So, all right. Now it's all the way down and, well, not all the way down, but I want to finish it the rest of the way. But um, let's just do that, actually. So... So we need a little bit more room right there. So we will grab this. 
bring it down. Then we're gonna go outside. Make sure that that is not happening, which it is. So actually just flip that open, pull it down the rest of the way, and then I can clip that in there like that. All right. And then I can come back in here and in its closed state, I won't be able to stand in here, but I can still sit down um, in here. And now that I actually think about it, this is the mode that I was having trouble with, um, with the berths up here or these, this section. So if I sit over here, I can kind of feel the netting rubbing on my head. So that's why I was looking for a way to kind of keep that up there. But if you're a legitimate campsite, that's not a problem, right? But if I'm at a Walmart or something like that, maybe I'm just undercover camping, um, I can have this down and not look like you're actually trying to camp out there. You know what I'm saying? So um, at that point, it doesn't matter that much because I can survive with it on my head a little bit. But uh, this is what it looks like when it's uh, in its down position. And we're gonna go over here, actually. So make sure that this is all in and nothing is pinched. And it doesn't look like anything is pinched. So what I would then do is put that on there. Cinch this down the rest of the way. There's a button here that you push and it kind of latches back there. So if I was to push this, this comes out and it releases that. So we're gonna do the same thing on this side. And put that in there and down and this is that latch I was talking about when I push this it opens that up like that and then it clips in there so this popped out okay now we are in top secret camping mode so still a lot of room over here um, could I cook over here? I wouldn't want to because everything is so close. But um, I, you could still camp in here like this. Maybe you've got an incredibly windy day or for whatever reason you don't want to have the pop-up up. You can camp in here and there's a legitimate amount of room. It's amazing because the first times I used it, I just had it closed down like this. And um, the day that I actually finally opened it, it feels like you're in a mansion. Like it just really opens up and there's a lot of room in here. So. Super cool. And then tons of places to hook up different things and uh, situations like all sorts of holes like up here, up there. And the way they designed it is so you, so it's kind of modular. You can kind of turn it into whatever you want to do or strap down stuff, use bungee cords. So definitely a very bungee friendly um, trailer. So I think about talked about just about everything and just in case you were wondering there's an actual cover that covers the battery compartment i just took it off while i was tinkering in there um, i think that's about everything that i wanted to talk about right now I, i'm sure i'm going to forget something i'm going to post this video i'm going to be like oh yeah i should have talked about this but oh yeah so the garage or oh, the big door in the back so this let's see if we can get over there so you can see the latch kind of down there and we're gonna go outside and kind of show you what that looks like from the outside um, I'll do another video once I've cleaned up and kind of uh, set it up the way that I'm gonna have it set up but hopefully this is not locked uh, same kind of RV light system over here and then you can just pull that up so I'm gonna stop because it's gonna hit that but otherwise this flips all the way up so kind of zoom out so you've got perspective so that flips all the way up and that's what it looks from the that's what it looks like from the back okay close that and again it says cricket and taxa outdoors.com big commercial so i'll need to get rid of that um oh Let's talk about up here. So you can actually walk on this roof, right? Um, 
So you can step here and step there and step there and there, but not here or there or there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But anyways, uh, so you can step on the edges of this thing. So it's all fine. And then you can step on this strip right here that goes down the center. And so if you wanted to walk out there to do whatever, clean or some people have put solar panels up here, that kind of stuff. You want to maintain all that stuff. You'll be able to actually walk on that roof. So that's pretty cool. Huge windows as I fall backwards. Uh, huge windows over here. So actually pretty cool. And uh, more of that bungee strapping situation up here. So um, honestly, that's about everything I think I am thinking about talking about right now. So I'm going to stop this and I will post this as is. Uh, it's just a single shot video. My videos are not fancy. It's just, hey, here you go. Look at this. Um, I think that's everything I got for you guys right now. Hopefully you found this informative or somewhat useful. Uh, if not, just remember it was free and you didn't have to watch it.